and gentlemen, my name is Dr. John Belkowitz. And I'm David, here behind this extremely large and heavy object. It's a cool object, though. David, do you know what this is? Well, looks like it does something uh, to something down here. Exactly! <laughs> ASTMC 403 Time of Set. This is a doohickey that helps us determine when the concrete reaches 500 psi penetration strength and then uh, that's initial set and then 2000 psi penetration strength which is final set and David why do you think we would care about that information? Well obviously if we're looking at the need to put traffic on pavements, we're looking at anything like that, we've got liquidated damages for time We've got to get it, know when it's going to be to the strength that we need, how long that's going to take. One of the things that I think about a lot, which is concrete, <laughs> but concrete mix designs change from job to job to job. Right. Even if you have the same job site with the same concrete mix design, your cementitious package can change, your admixtures can change, unbeknownst to the end user. Do hickeys like this help you understand how the acceleration or the stabilization of that concrete will change up its fluid nature. Will it get harder faster or will it stay in a liquid state for a longer period of time? And I absolutely love this test where we set up this six inch diameter, six inch tall cylinder and every 20 minutes, 15 minutes we come back and we we push it down, it gives you a penetration resistance in pounds, and then we have the surface area to give us our PSI. Right. This thing is flipping awesome sauce. Yep. And we need to send it to the field. We need to get these numbers from the lab, send them to our field folks. So that's the biggest problem with this. This is not a field piece of equipment. No. You can't put this in your back pocket. That'd be hard. That'd be hard. <laughs> yeah, well, good choice of words. <laughs> but what we can use is a... Do we have a drum roll or... The handheld penetrometer. So I was uh, talking about this on Facebook oh. the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm a Facebook enthusiast. We have a Facebook page. You should jump on and check it out. But somebody asked, what is a good way of determining when to put the power trowels on top of the slab. And you had people say, well, you put your foot on it, step down, if you don't see a footprint, you're good to go. Or one guy said, I'm not even joking, you slap it really hard, and if it doesn't jiggle, you're good to go. Another gentleman say, throw some rocks on it if they don't cause indentations, which hey, that, those concepts, if you've been doing those for years and you're really good at it, go with it. You know, I mean, that's a great thing about concrete. I, it's a wonderful material that anybody can use, and if you have those tricks of the trade, there is an art to the science. Now, yeah. David was rolling his <laughs> eyes because David is the engineer, David is the scientist. Um, there's a handheld field version of this that actually fits into your back pocket, or it has a belt clip on it. Oh, but, good for engineers. Oh my God, <laughs> love this thing. So this is a handheld penetrometer, and it gives you the same concept where, I love this thing. I know. <laughs> After a certain amount of time, you put this on the top surface with no lateral movement, and you push it down until you get to this red line over here, and that'll give you a pound resistance that you can divide by the surface area of this pin to determine your PSI, your penetration resistance, which correlates to this test. Oh, it's the same thing. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Love it. It's not just correlation, it's exactly the same thing. So you can have a lab do this for you on your mix design right? to give you a general idea of where you should be, but we all know the lab and the field are two totally different monsters. Specifically with your concrete mixes, there are some standard deviations with the materials going into the back of the truck. That's right. And your ambient environment. That's right. So this will give you a good starting point but using this in the field is a more scientific way than giving it a good old slap or putting your foot on it and waiting for the indentation. You know, John, I have to bring, I used to have a table that said if you had size 10 shoes, how much area that was. And you could take the weight of the person and the area of the yeah, shoe. You <laughs> yeah, did. Did you really? I actually had that. So yeah, um, but gosh, I wish I had this instead. This is <laughs> so much easier. You know. You know. So I had uh, somebody had asked a question on Facebook, which was, 
Uh, and this is on our Q&A Wednesday. This is more of a tech review for us. Somebody asked the question, what's the best way to determine the best time to get on the slab? And that's one of this slapping it until it doesn't jiggle, putting your foot on it, throwing some rocks. I had said, why not use a handheld penetrometer? Right. And somebody's reply was, oh, John, this is why they don't let you out of the lab. Hey, listen, if you've got a way that you've been doing it for years and it works, far be it for me to change what you've been doing. That being said, if you've got a more reproducible manner that you can teach the other folks on your team who haven't been doing it for 30 years, that's scientific, why wouldn't you want to use it, especially if it's going to give you better results to get on and off the slab faster, saving you money, and still making that concrete stronger and last longer? Yeah, the stress strain guy says that if we can measure the stress, that's the best way to go. You know, if you're looking to get a power trowel on and you can walk on it, and the power trowel can probably get on it, right. that's good. I'm in there, the white, I'm there with my white hard hat, my clipboard, and they ask me, okay, can we, can we let these tractor trailers go ahead and drive over this? I don't think I'm going to like the jiggle test. I just... Uh, you know, I don't know if they call it that, but they should call they it They should the call it that. Uh, ASTM XXX, the uh, pavement jiggle test. But, uh, you know, I'm going to want real hard strength data to, to make that decision. You know, I actually have some footage of a slab that we did years and years, decades ago, where somebody did the foot test, but based on the admixtures that we were using, the concrete gelled up and gave them a false reading. Right. So the video that I have, and we'll include it on here, thanks, Patchouli, <laughs> shows the pattern. We told them, hey, it's not ready to go. I'm like, no, 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 it's good. He passed the foot test. And they put that power trial, it went like four or five revolutions, and then went <laughs> And it was pretty, wasn't cool for me, because I had to drag it out, but if they had something like this, it would have given them a better indication. Right. So, yeah, hopefully this helps you out. These are really inexpensive. I think they're like 50 bucks. So this is very expensive. You gotta get this calibrated uh, once a year. Um, and this, you still have to get it calibrated, but like I said, it's a lot cheaper. Fits in your back pocket. Get it off of Amazon, too, which is flipping wild. We got it from 40. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you learned something. Let us know if you have any questions on the time is set or the handheld penetrometer, which is awesome. Um, when you're in the field, let's use real data for real problems. Amen. Amen. Thanks for your time today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment. Go Concrete! Beat it.